Hi friends, and welcome to episode three of Quarantine Catholic. This is the third episode in our series on prayer, uh, different forms of prayer, and today we are going to be talking about Ignatian contemplation. We call this form of prayer Ignatian because it comes from St. Ignatius Loyola, who was the founder of the Jesuits, or the Society of Jesus, which is their more formal title. If you're not familiar, the Society of Jesus is a religious order of men. In fact, it's, um, if not the largest, then one of the largest uh, religious orders of men in the world, mostly ordained priests, although there are lay brothers in the Society of Jesus, or Jesuits. The most famous Jesuit today is Pope Francis. Uh, in fact, Pope Francis is the first Jesuit ever to have been elected Pope. Um, <clears throat> one of the highlights of Jesuit training, and it's a long and fairly rigorous uh, training, we're talking nine, ten years uh, of training, one of the highlights is uh, the spiritual exercises. And the spiritual exercises uh, is a retreat which all Jesuits must take. There's a short form and a long form. Uh, all Jesuits take the long form, which is a month-long silent retreat uh, just before they make their final uh, or solemn vows uh, as Jesuits. <clears throat> um, and the, um, the backbone of the spiritual exercises is Ignatian contemplation. So Jesuits sometimes talk about uh, composition of place. Composition of place means using your imagination to place yourself in a gospel story. So we're using our minds, we're using our imaginations. Uh, so this is definitely a more cataphatic form of prayer. Right? It's not apophatic at all, really. It's cataphatic. Um, you might be saying, can we really use our imaginations in prayer? Um, to some of us, that might seem somehow um, illegitimate or inauthentic, right? Is, is my prayer really um, authentic uh, if... I'm just making up a bunch of stuff uh, in my head. Yes, of course, why not? Uh, imagination is one of the gifts that God has given us. Um, you know, it's that uh, by which we can come to know uh, what has been and what could be right? Um, so we should use our imaginations in prayer, um, particularly if uh, we are of that, um, uh, of that bent, right? If we are uh, naturally um, imaginative people, if you're the kind of person where, um, if you're a daydreamer, right, uh, and you're, you're in the middle of some daily task and you find your um, your mind, your imagination, uh, wandering off in all sorts of, uh, of crazy directions, why not harness that gift uh, and use it for prayer, and use it for conversing with God? That's sort of the genius of, um, of St. Ignatius' um, uh, method of, of prayer. So, what will you need for Ignatian contemplation? As with Lectio Divina, all that you need is a Bible. Again, I typically prefer the RSV, the Revised Standard Version, or the NAB, the New American Bible, because these are translations which are true to the original uh, texts, Hebrew and Greek. 
but also rendered in language which is uh, accessible, easily understood by uh, a modern reader. And as I mentioned before, the NAB, the New American Bible, also happens to be the version of the Bible which we hear read uh, in church uh, on Sundays, uh, or, or in daily Mass for that matter. Um, so I am using today my New American Bible, Catholic uh, Study Edition. Uh, again, uh, this happens to be a, um, a study Bible uh, with all of the wonderful extras that study Bibles have. Uh, a study Bible is not necessary for prayer. This just happens to be the Bible that I'm using. Um, so, first you'll need to choose a, a text from Scripture. A gospel story really works best here. Um, it is much easier to place yourself imaginatively in a story from the gospel than, say, uh, in, a, in a text from Leviticus or uh, in um, uh, one or more of the Proverbs, right? Um, to each his own, of course, uh, but I, I just don't know what you would get uh, out of trying to imaginally, imaginatively place yourself in a, a text about the proper way to sacrifice a goat or um, the, the, the proper way of disciplining children, right? Um, Gospel stories uh, just facilitate this form uh, of prayer better uh, than other parts of the Bible, as I hope we'll see here in just a moment. So today I am taking as my text <clears throat> the calming of the storm at sea from Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. So first read through the text carefully and prayerfully. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to them, let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took him with them in a boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even wind and sea obey? So after you have read through the text, this is where the prayer uh, really begins. Um, place yourself imaginatively in the story. Uh, who and where are you in the story? Are you one of the disciples? Are you one of those in the boat with Jesus? Are you a bystander, perhaps uh, far off, uh, watching this unfold from the shore? Do you have a God's eye view of this scene? Are you sort of watching it from above, right? So who are you and where are you uh, in the scene? Then imagine the sensory details of the scene. and Really try to get as vivid as possible. You know, you might imagine <clears throat> the darkness of, uh, of the clouds gathered over uh, the Sea of Galilee, the feel of 
the boat rocking back and forth. Maybe it even makes you a little bit queasy. Uh, the chill uh, of, of the waves uh, as they crash against the side of the boat and kind of spray uh, onto your face. Uh, the taste of the salt water on your lips. Uh, the smell of uh, ripe fish, uh, the day's catch uh, in the boat, or, or maybe even the body odor uh, of your companions. Uh, consider what you uh, are, are experiencing emotionally. Uh, perhaps you share in that fear and anxiety that the disciples feel because of the storm. Perhaps you too want uh, to cry out, Lord, do you not care that we are perishing? And this <clears throat> might be a, a good guide to uh, what you select as your biblical text, right? Whatever your particular um, uh, spiritual or emotional state happens to be at the time, uh, maybe you would choose a, a biblical text that corresponds to that spiritual or emotional state, right? If you're feeling fear and anxiety because um, the, the the world around you, uh, the natural world, or, or your life circumstances seem to be uh, overwhelming and, and, and threatening and unstable, which I'm sure is uh, what many of us, if not most of us, are feeling now in this time of a, a global pandemic or a quarantine. Uh, maybe it's uh, that kind of text that you want to select. Um, so once you've uh, immersed yourself in, in the sensory detail of the scene, add action. What do you do? What do you say? And then, and here's the money. You turn to Jesus, who has just awoken. What does Jesus say to you? <clears throat> Again, this is an imaginative form of prayer. We should not at all be hesitant to deviate, if that's the right word, from, uh, from the text. Right? The text is really just a, a jumping off point. Right? Um, and frankly, you know, uh, unless our imagination leads us in some sort of obviously heretical uh, direction, Right. Um, you know, if your prayer leads you to imagine Jesus saying, don't follow me, follow Satan. Uh, OK, that's not that's not from God, obviously. Um, but I don't think most of us are going there um, or any of us. Um, what does Jesus say to you? Right. And I really want to stress, again, that imagination is a gift. It's a gift from God to be used in prayer, and it does not in any way, shape, or form make our experience of God in prayer somehow inauthentic. Right? This question of boy, was that was that really from God, or was it just all in my head? Was it just my imagination? Um, to, to bring in a, a line from, or a, a scene from uh, Harry Potter for you Potterheads out there. Hi. Um, you, you know, you remember when uh, Harry has this sort of out of body or near death experience uh, and he speaks with uh, Professor Dumbledore, who has preceded him in death. And the last thing he he says to Dumbledore, asks Dumbledore, uh, when he comes out of that 
um, uh, near-death experience is, is this all real or is it just in my head? And Dumbledore smiles and he says, of course it's happening in your head, Harry, but why does that mean that it's not real? Right? Um, what exists in our head, uh, what happens uh, in our head, uh, in our minds, in our imaginations, has a reality of its own. Um, uh, and, and this can be, and frequently is, um, the, uh, the means, the mode uh, in which God speaks to us. Right? Um, so in that moment, where you uh, have placed yourself imaginatively in the gospel story. You've conjured up all of this uh, rich sensory detail, and you've made yourself a part of the story, and you have this moment of interaction with Jesus. What does Jesus say to you? It might be a, a general word of encouragement or approach. It might be very specific to your own personality and, and needs and wants and circumstances. Um, the more we allow ourselves to be <clears throat> creative in this form of prayer, the more leeway we give to the Holy Spirit to inspire us. Now, sometimes uh, when Ignatian contemplation is done, I mean, this can be done individually or uh, as a group where it's done as a kind of a, a, a guided meditation where you have a, a prayer leader uh, and then all the participants. <clears throat> so particularly when this is done uh, as a, a group, or even when it's done individually, oftentimes amongst Jesuits, um, Ignatian uh, contemplation is followed by what we call a sharing of graces. Share what you learned, what you um, what you learned about God or about yourself, um, the blessings that you were given uh, in that prayer time. Share those with others. Um, spread that grace around. Um, uh, because then, you know, that will uh, fire other people's imaginations and, and help other people uh, to be led into a, a deeper experience of God uh, in prayer. So again, to review those uh, steps, uh, you choose a, a text from Scripture, preferably short, preferably from the Gospels, um, a, a story, a narrative that is from the Gospels. Um, Probably not um, a, um, a, a, a teaching of Jesus, a, a, a part of the gospel where Jesus is speaking at length, such as the Sermon on the Mount. Although, again, to each his own. Uh, and maybe, you know, you're, um, you are a particularly imaginative person. Um, and you can do that um, with, with great results. Right? It's really up to you. So choose a text from scripture, prayerfully, slowly read through the text uh, so you have the substance of it. Imagine, uh, place yourself imaginatively in the story. Who are you in the story? Where are you in the story? What are you doing in the story? Imagine the sensory detail in as, um, uh, uh, as vividly as you can. Uh, and then add action. What do you say? What do you do? And what does Jesus do? And what does Jesus say to you? Right? Uh, and, and I have found in my own experience of Ignatian contemplation that that's where uh, the, the, the real graces and blessings of this prayer happen. So that is uh, Ignatian contemplation, again, a very cataphatic form of prayer. 
uh, in the next episode, uh, episode four, we're going to move to uh, what is almost the direct opposite <clears throat> of uh, Ignatian contemplation, which is the Jesus prayer, a very apophatic form uh, of prayer. So I look forward to uh, sharing my thoughts about that with you, and we will see you then.